Hi, Bruce. How are Hello. you? Do they flip the sign around? Um, I have my own sign. Oh, you have your own sign. I mean, I put riches over here. I take off the <laughs> uh, the best dad ever because let's face it, who was the one at three a.m. dealing with the kids last? Oh my God! Night? Yeah, whoa, he whoa, yeah whoa, he whoa. doesn't get credit for that. No, he's he. I will say this, and you're not surprised. Rich is a great dad and incredibly hands on, but I'm just saying, like you know, needs to keep it kept on track. Yeah. You know, get out the whips. How are you, Bruce? What's I'm, going on? I'm doing good. You know what's going on? Uh, best dad ever's alma mater's going on. <laughs> it's just it's like constantly. It's crazy. Bruce, I, I mean, it sounds so simple to say this. What the heck is going on? I mean, because every day we're getting little, little bits of information as opposed to one collective release so we actually know. So all we are left to do is surmise, in your opinion, what is really happening at the University of Michigan? I think there's a lot of angst right now inside Michigan because you have this team that is a great team with all these veteran leaders who've come back. They have dominated everybody they played, and yet this is now going to hang over the rest of the season because there's a lot of what seems to be damning evidence that is mounting about signal stealing that goes into the category of advanced scouting, which is different than the signal stealing that is normally kind of accepted as part of college football and football in general, which is the in-game stuff. Uh, Connor Stallions, who was a, he's a 28 year old um, Naval Academy grad who was on staff. He wasn't a position coach. He has since been suspended, but this was a guy who had a reputation inside the program as being as being very, very good at cracking another team's signals. And it's something he took pride in. As somebody who who knows him a little a little bit, that that wasn't a that wasn't a secret. Now the part that's different here is that there seems to be documentation that is piled up uh showing him buying tickets to it seems like have people or himself film a team's signals ahead of time. And that is definitely against the rules, especially if he's doing it. Um, you know, how much how much of an advantage does it give Michigan? I think it depends on who you talk to among the coaching world, because there's a lot of coaches who feel like, okay, this is wrong, but also some of this has gone on at you know in pockets. We've just never seen as high profile of a situation where it seems to have come to light. And how quickly will the NCA be able to, I don't want to say get out in front of it, but my sense, and we've talked about this on the show with Rich, is that Jim Harbaugh, who's obviously danced with the NFL a couple times the last two years, and he has a really good record as an NFL head coach in the past, will bounce after this season. And the stuff that he's already in the middle of the NCAA hot water with in terms of COVID um, violations during the COVID dead period from a few years ago, that they won't be able to do anything to him. And they may be able to, san to add sanctions to his alma mater, Michigan, uh, but what happens with this? Can they get out in front of him? Or, you know, if Michigan wins a national title, you know, does that something that could be taken away? I don't, I, I don't think anybody has any answers to this right now. I mean, I have so many questions to follow up. I want to ask you about sloppy forensics. But when you say that, I said this earlier, it just makes me think of the years at USC when they went on um, with the Reggie Bush, Carson Palmer years, and Pete Carroll bounced for Seattle and left behind a whole hot mess behind him. I mean, what are the similarities to you? Well, in the case of that, you know, Reggie Bush's case, so USC really kind of thumbed its nose at the NCAA. And a lot of times schools are very, uh, or seemingly, you know, cooperative with the investigation. That was not the case with USC. And the NCAA hammered USC after that. Um, and it was really about about the case with Reggie. And what, you, what was weird there was you had an agent who, uh, you know, an NFL agent who was trying to get Reggie and there were benefits involved. And the, the, the curious part of that, or the, I, I don't know if it's ironic, but they were really trying to do something to get Reggie to leave. And when he left, it wasn't like, hey, these are benefits to come to USC. And that's where it kind of blew up in their face and they hammered them. This, like, I don't, I personally do not feel like, okay, you know, they, Reggie lost his Heisman. I don't feel like that is a, people are looking at it going, oh yeah, USC didn't win those games or, or what, what, what not. In this case, I think you will have some people argue, hey, 
they're winning some of these games because they have the answers to the test ahead of time. And that's the part that falls into the competitive balance. I think it depends on how many coaches you talk to and who you talk to. Certain coaches feel a lot more strongly about that than others. But that's the benefit of the doubt that Michigan is going to lose in a lot of people's eyes. And you saw that Deion Sanders said it doesn't really matter. You have to be better. He yeah. talked about his Cowboys. Everybody knew what they were going to do. Emmett Smith was going to run the ball. Michael was going to go ball yes. out. But Michigan's in a position in which they have really talented guys who could go on to win the championship. Number one, how fast will the NCAA work? Number two, will it be the NCAA or will it be the Big Ten? And number three, what does it say for this season? I mean, I never like to ask three questions in a row, but my head's exploding. So let me ask, let me get to the, like, I would be surprised. It could be the Big Ten. I would be surprised if it was the Big Ten. Because from, from what I'd heard, I don't know how much the the Big Ten has everything, whereas the NCAA may be out in front of this a little more. I just would be surprised if the Big Ten was going to shut down a flagship program like that. Yeah, and they don't want to have, they want Michigan to be in the championship. They do, they and they, it benefits the them, it benefits their brand, it, it just adds so much. You know, I get it. They're going to get a lot of pushback from some of the schools in their conference. Now, the other layers to this that I think are really interesting is if you're Michigan and right now, like they've smashed schools. It hasn't been close to anybody. But now the, the pretty much their schedule falls into two games the regular season. It's Penn State, which is on the road, and, and Ohio State comes to play them you have to think those schools are going to be so buttoned up whether they're going to use wristbands or they're going to change all their signals. You know, whatever intel that, that Michigan has or may have, it's probably not going to be applicable. So It's all changed now. Yeah. So I think if you're a, if you're a Michigan person, you're going to go, look, it's going to come down to that. I mean, I, I will say this. I talked to a coach on one of the Big Ten teams they've already beaten, and this coach was like, if they had anything on us, nothing like out of the ordinary, they didn't have any like calls or anything that was like, they just whipped us because they were a lot better than us. Now, last year going into the Ohio State Michigan game, I did a story where I talked to a lot of coaches who played both teams. And one of the coaches I talked to was a running back coach said this, and I didn't even think about this when this story broke last Wednesday, but a colleague of mine pointed this out in the story that I had where he, this coach said, Michigan had our stuff early. They had both sides of the ball. They they had all our signals. And so, you know, it kind of su supports to some degree that there was some advanced intel that they would have had. Um, I just think it's, it's just a fascinating story on a lot of levels, including the part which you said, which you were talking about before we came on, which is like, man, some of this stuff is really sloppy. You know, you talked about the forensics piece of this. Like, that's the part where I'm like, okay, we got a Naval Academy grad. Um, it doesn't add up. This is not like the Galuli world of the, you know, Tanya Harding days of like, these are really, you know, sloppy, sloppy, you know, characters and bad actors in here. You just wouldn't think they would be, you know, like, be so, have it so traceable. That's exactly what we were saying. Again, Bruce Feldman here on the Rich Eisen Show, Susie Schuster in for Rich. That's what we were saying is that, it's one thing to be cavalier and cocky. It's another thing in 2023 to be using your personal credit cards to be a staff member of the Michigan football team and to be that lazy, that sloppy, which leads me to believe in some strange way. Was he just trying to boost his self-worth? Did he actually connect it to Harbaugh? Was he actually putting this into play? It feels way too Keystone Cops and stupid. Stupid, frankly. It, it does. I mean, like, you know, part, part of me is sitting there thinking about this, you know, just as like, I would guess, you know, like, I'm not great with technology. I am of that age where I'm not, I'm just not, right? Like, your kids are probably more adept at certain things than Rich is, right? No doubt. And so, but he's not, you know... Me and Del Tufo's age, where it's like he's, you know, he's a 28 year old who is in, trained in the, you know, in the military. You just think like it defies a little logic. It almost feels part. like a strange plant to bring. I mean, it's, it's so insane. And I know it's not. Let me make that clear. But it's so insane and so lazy for a military guy who's very bright 
you would know. It's, it, that part doesn't add up to me, right? And so I, I think there is a part of this where from talking to people who know Connor pretty well, that this was something he took pride in. I know he took pride in this. And this was like, you know, the idea of, hey, here's a military guy. And, you know, there, you, people can find stuff that he's written online or had written online in the past that kind of reflects this. It's something he took pride in. So if this is something you're really, really good at and people know you're really, really good at and people you really respect, because obviously everything I've heard is he was a diehard Michigan fan long before he ever, you know, was on their sidelines that, okay, what can I do to sharpen my skills? What else can I do? Because if this is what you think about, um, you know, coaches go to clinics, coaches do all these things to try to get better at their craft. You know, did he brainstorm? And again, I'm not, I, I think there's plenty of people you don't need to be an Ohio State fan to go like, okay, this definitely feels like Jim Harbaugh had to know. Head coaches have to know where the information is coming from. It's it's stra It strains credibility to think that they would have no knowledge of what this guy because at the end of the day you have to trust this person who's giving you information going yeah I, you should call this or this is what they're doing here because like why would you believe that person if they didn't have a track record of being extremely prescient you have to wonder you said the words which really like set me up diehard fan it's very dangerous to put diehard fans on your staff because that means they'll be desperate to have a win come. So they want to make themselves feel more relevant or more valuable or what have you. And the minute you add a fan into the mix, you're, you're, you're playing with somebody who's willing to do almost anything that they can possibly do to be relevant. And, and people are saying now, well, what are you going to do? It's always been around, sign stealing, whether you're going to go. You can't obviously go on the road like he did and line up tickets to steal these signs, but it's been around forever. So what's, what's the answer? I mean, you cannot move i don't think to the nfl with having the in helmet because not every not every camps can afford that i think that's a that's a question i've talked to coaches this week who are like this is a five minute fix um in terms of if they did go to the nfl model and some teams use that in spring football it's just not cleared for in in game i think you know on the point you just made about the diehard fan and just thinking about this like this this years ago but i remember talking you know got some anonymous tips from some some fan and about some other schools cheating and i was and he was like well this school this school would never cheat i was like any place where they have like obsessed fans they have the potential to have some kind of scandal mm -hmm. because all it takes is some you know a couple of boosters with some money who want to show how important they are feel that much more connected that they can do some really shady stuff because players are and their families are pretty accessible now everybody knows who gets who's getting recruited and who people think are valued recruits so that part is not a stretch to think that 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 that's the parallel that could happen but in terms of a fix i think it is a case of look if the nfl can make it happen colleges there's tons of money now does that mean division three schools can go to the nfl model or even fcs programs Maybe not, but that's ultimately where the money is. So it's like if they can fix it, they probably need to fix it. It's just from what I've heard, there are some coaches out there who are like, mm, they, they lean on that, that stealing signals and that works to their benefit. So maybe they do not want their ADs or their presidents at the end of the day to vote for those things to go through. Bruce Feldman joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show. You said follow the money. That takes me to USC. Unfortunately, that's a weird little segue that just comes into my head. Obviously, um, we know what's happening there, but what's your opinion on where you're seeing USC going with losses and the surprises? Do you think there's anything to the idea that Caleb Williams getting money in advance means he's just not as hungry as you would have been in the past to win because you already have a huge bankroll? I don't think that that's it. I, I think what you have right now is you have a team that has – was had a terrible defense last year it's not much better now you see like last week they had a chance to finish off utah you know one of their talented former five-star recruits who came from georgia has two you know really bad plays that end up costing them and give utah more opportunity i think you also see a team that's like caleb covered up a lot of flaws not certainly not just on the defense but on the offensive line their offensive line is worse this year than it was last year and going to see them play Notre Dame in South Bend a couple of weeks ago, 
you could see physically they did not look like what an SE offensive line should look like. And I think what, what happens is you can keep it on track for a while, and Caleb's a phenomenal talent, but I think there's some flaws that eventually got exposed, right? And I think you see a team that still is struggling with its identity because it's like for so long, I think they can lean on, hey, we got the best player in college football. He's going to cover it up. He's going to fix it. Well, against Notre Dame, they had five turnovers. He threw three picks in the first half. And now all of a sudden that facade, if you want to call it that, was kind of punctured or fell apart. And now, like, they played a Utah team that's a tough, physically and mentally tough team. And they were not intimidated by USC at all because they beat them twice last year. And then they ended up coming back to get them. Like, they'll play Cal this weekend. I think they'll win that game. And then they have Washington next week. Washington's loaded. And Washington, to me, is a bad matchup for them because not only they have Michael Penix Jr. and a good system, but they have really good receivers. And USC, to me, their biggest issue, micro, is that their defensive backs are not very good. They're not playing with much confidence. They don't tackle well. They don't seem to react. They just seem like they, they're not playing with a lot of confidence. And I wonder if it's this. It's that they go up against Caleb Williams and some – you know, a lot of firepower every day at practice, and maybe it's hard to, to build confidence that way. And yet you'd think that if you're spending this much money for a head coach, these are little, these are not, these are not little errors. These are obvious. If you're spending this much money and putting this much money into a program, how do these flaws, how do these errors keep getting exposed? I think that it was, they went from whatever they were, four and eight to like an 11 win team last year. They got a lot better. Sure, certainly a lot of that was Caleb and a lot of that was Lincoln Riley bringing an identity on offense. But they, you know, like the schedule is a little harder this year than it was last year. I do think they're better on defense, but even it's not that much. And also like last year they would fall apart in the fourth quarter of games. That just, it happened as the year went on. I think that could happen now. Like, I mean, if they go nine and three, like they're better. It's just like they, I I think in my own read, I thought they were going to be a playoff team because I thought Caleb was that much better than everybody else. And I still think he is the best quarterback in the country. But, you know, they, they're not good enough in a lot of places. They don't have that much of a margin for error, you know. And so ultimately, you're going to get got two or three times. And I think that's what they are. And they just haven't, they just don't have enough good players. They do not have a good enough offensive line. They don't have enough quality on defense. They're, they're kind of undisciplined. They are undisciplined. I don't think you're kind of undisciplined. They are undisciplined because that showed last week at late in the game. And it shows at times. And those things, I think, you know, Lincoln Riley, those are the things he has to get right. That they, have, they, they need to be a more disciplined team. They need to recruit better on the offensive line. The portal can help, but it couldn't do everything for them. Last question. At the end of the season, finish the sentence, Michigan football is going to? It's a good question. Michigan football is going to drive a lot of eyeballs, no matter what. I think, I think it's going to be really hard for the NCAA to get out in front of this. I like the only thing I can compare it to is like about a decade ago or a dozen years ago, Cam Newton took college football by storm when he came from junior college back to the SEC. And he was the best college football player I've ever seen. And there was all kinds of drama about the NCAA was going to get them or whatever. And they won a national title. And it was almost all Cam Newton, right? He was the only, like they had one other big time guy, Nick Farrelly, who was a draft guy. And if I'm not mistaken, they still got all that. You know, and he still got his Heisman, and people can believe what they're, you know, how they feel about it. You know, the question is, can Michigan? I think they are. Like, if you asked me eight days ago, I think Michigan was gonna was the team I picked to win the national title. I think JJ McCarthy's playing at a really high level. I'm sure they will do the us against the world thing. That it's not just Ohio against the world with with Ryan Day. I think it's us against the world thing. I think the question again is, can the NCA? may you know like man what does that look like i i don't know you know i just it's so i could be wrong on this and i probably will be but like it just doesn't seem like the ncaa ever moves this fast that's what i thought too yeah so i think at some point you know i think jim harbaugh wins jim harbaugh leaves i don't know where you know i don't know if he goes to the bears i don't know if he goes to the chargers i don't know where he goes but i don't think he's going to be there next next year and rich eisen cries 
Oh, he's going to lose his mind. Well, you know, will he be conflicted if he wins a national title and then they lose the national title? How does that work? Uh, I think it's going to be a nightmare all around. How Was about it, that? Is it a bigger nightmare than than being two and five and losing to Ohio? They didn't even play Ohio State the, the pandemic year when they. But is it which is the worst nightmare to the huge Michigan fan to get get losing thumped? to Ohio State? Period. Period. End of story. Yes. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.